Right, enough pleasantries, time to get down to work. In this module, we're going to look at some of the key concepts of Node.js. That is, what makes Node fundamentally different from other programming languages that you may have already encountered. In particular, we'll be looking at the asynchronous non-blocking nature of Node and its event loop. But before we get into all of that, let's talk about its name. Let's clear up some of the confusion about names. You're on a course to learn Node.js, right? Well, at least I hope you are, otherwise this could be a great waste of time and money for you. Uh, but we know it better as JavaScript. Now, JavaScript over the years has come in many different forms, different implementations on different browsers. Fortunately, there is a standards group that makes sure that there is a set specification for people to adhere to. This version of JavaScript is known as ECMA script, and we are currently on version 6 of it. Now, you'll hear it referred to as ECMA script 6 or ES6 or even EC6 sometimes, but the correct term is ECMA script 2015, and that is the version of JavaScript that Node is based on. And in fact, the current version of Node, version 8, also has some bits from ECMA script 2017. And very few browsers, if any at this time, have actually implemented that. But to avoid all this confusion, at this point, I will only be referring to it as JavaScript. Now you understand all about Node, JavaScript, ECMA script 2015, 6, or whatever they're going to decide to call it next week. The important thing to realize is that Node is dirty. That means, of course, it's a data-intensive real-time system. It's great for pumping data around at high speeds between two certain points. For instance, like a chat room, or let's say you had an electronic point of sale that needed to update stock or make stock queries and react in real time to that from a central server at HQ. Node is perfect for these kind of applications. But what makes it perfect? Well, probably the most important thing to understand about Node is its event loop. Remember this diagram? I was trying to explain that Node is a single threaded process. There's only one instance of it running at any given time on the server, and it has to handle every request coming in, every user that is assigned to that server. Now, if the user's process needs to run a bit of code that, let's say, goes off and gets some information from a database, the user's operations can't continue until that data comes back. If it's a single threaded process, that means all users are blocked and cannot be responded to while we're waiting for that one user. And then you can times that problem by all the other users. To get around this problem, Node has an asynchronous non-blocking event loop. When users make requests, if that request is going to block, it will hand the request off at the operating system level to a separate process. That process will then get back to it when it's finished and it monitors those processes using something called the event loop. It's a series of phases that are constantly repeated while the Node application is running. You see, Node gets around the blocking problem by calling external processes to do jobs for it. For instance, let's say we wanted to read in a file. Node will create a separate process to go and do that job, and that process will come back to it when it's finished. In the meantime, Node continues its event loop allowing more code to run, and also avoiding blocking any other users. The poll phase will check whether that file has been successfully read in, or unsuccessfully, and then execute the code that's been given, which is known as the callback. Don't worry, we'll get into all of this when we get down to the code. It's not vital to understand how all this works, but it will give you a bit of a background as to how you can code using this asynchronous pattern. Let's see how that works in practice. Firstly, we're going to have a simple script that conforms to a standard programming model. So firstly, we'll set up some variables. Then we might go and fetch a user record from a database, and then load in an HTML template from a file system. And we can put those two together and render a HTML page using the data that we got back from the database. We can then send that result out to the client, and finally, we'll print complete to the console on standard out. Doesn't work like that in Node. Let me show you. Firstly, we'll set up our variables, just like before, that's fine. Then we'll talk to a database, and the next thing that will happen is we'll print complete to the console. We've jumped right to the end. Why? Because the call to the database is asynchronous. 
it's going to set up a separate process to go off and do that job and then continue running. And we don't want it to do anything else until we've got that record back. Now we can give it a callback, some code to execute, to run when it's finished that job. So we can say, right, then load in a template from the file system. Again, this is an asynchronous call. It will set up a separate process and keep running anything after it until the code comes back. But anything after it won't have access to that template. It's not loaded yet. So we can't render it until all those three things, the database and the file, have all come together. And again, the rendering process is likely to be asynchronous. So only when that's finished can we finally send the result to the client. This is a callback chain. Honestly, don't panic. The first time I show that diagram to people, they tend to turn white and feel like they need a bit of a sit down and maybe a cup of tea. But we will get through that. And you'll actually see the advantages of it. It actually becomes a very powerful tool. Plus, there are programming techniques to make it much more logical in appearance to the, the coder even though it's still conforming to that asynchronous model that serves Node so well. Quick word about streams. With the few inevitable exceptions, Node views everything around it as a stream, whether it's a web page that it's either sending to or trying to get data from, whether it's reading or writing from the file system, the console, or a database, it generally treats them as a stream. This conforms to its non-blocking architecture. Because with a stream, it can work asynchronously. This comes with its problems for the programmer, because let's say, for instance, in the file system, you ask nodes to read some data in, you can't ask it to load the entire file in one go. Not out of the box, anyway. It will read some data in, and occasionally come back to you and say, I've got some data now, would you like to do anything with it? And eventually it will say, right, that's the end of it but you've got to handle those calls coming in and you cannot predict necessarily what size they're gonna be um, and how often they're going to happen. This sometimes can be tedious and challenging for the programmer involved, but fortunately Node has a lot of help built into it and external libraries you can import to make this much, much easier. But basically, once you've got your head around the concept of one stream, it's pretty easy to learn them all. I'd like to finish this module with a recommendation. During the course, we're going to be doing a lot of work with APIs, that's application programming interfaces. This is how computers often communicate with each other on the internet. And we're gonna be going off to computers and getting all kinds of interesting data and downloading it and processing it. The language, the format, the structure of the data that is used for this is often JSON, JavaScript object notation. If you've not come across this before, it is well worth your time going to json.org and having a little read up about how JSON works. It is actually very, very simple, but can look a little messy at first glance. One of the good things about Node and JavaScript is that it understands JSON absolutely natively, and you have to do very little to get that data in and start using it. So we will be focusing on that quite a lot. Now, onto one of my favorite features of Node, modules.